Hello all, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at gas discharge tubes, and how to make them and the science behind them. So to begin by making an ampule, this is some standard 10 millimeter with heavy walls, so it's 2 millimeters of wall and then a 10 millimeter diameter. We're gonna make a basic ampule and then fill it with the gas. If you've been following along with the series, you've seen this done a couple times. Let's light the torch and begin. And there we have our bottom made, and let's set it off to cool, and then we'll make the neck. Okay, our tube's now cool, and let's make a little neck on this, so then we can fill it up with gas. I want to make a test tube about three inches long, so that's going to be about there. You're going to want to heat shorter towards what you want to make the test tube out of because as you pull it your neck's going to become longer and then you're going to have to seal it later down the line and down in the area that you're sealing it you're stretching out the tube so if you want it to three inches you're going to have to do smaller than that if you want it to be three inches Make sure not to let go until the glass has hardened so it doesn't flex, and there you have your test tube. I'm going to take it and put it in the tip of the flame to drive off some of the water produced from the combustion reaction. Now our test tube is water free, and we can set it off to the side to cool, and then we can fill it with gas. So while that's cooling, let's go over our gas exchange system. The gas we'll be putting in the test tube today is argon. Argon is a cool gas, it's an inert gas, and it gives off this nice violet color when it's discharging. This is just a small 20 cubic feet tank, which is hooked up to our gas exchange system, which is this part down here. On top of it is a vacuum pump. The pressures for this need to be quite low. This is about a $100 two-stage vacuum pump. A one-stage vacuum pump will not work because it doesn't get to a low enough pressure. Now the stopcock down here is a two-way stopcock. One line is the high pressure line, which leads to our argon, which is regulated down. And then the other line, the line back here, leads back up to our vacuum pump. And then we have one output line. So right now we're in the vacuum portion, but if we switch this, it'll start venting argon. What we're going to do is cycle a couple times, vacuum argon, vacuum argon, vacuum argon, 
to get as much of the air out and get as much as the argon in so we have a nice pure sample. And then I have a Tesla coil here, which we can test it before sealing. It's good to test these before sealing because sometimes they don't get to a low enough pressure to begin with, and then you'll just have a low pressure gas tube that doesn't light, which is annoying and pointless. Our ampule is all set up. I went ahead and attached a hose clamp to the tube that connects it up to the vacuum pump. I like to attach a hose clamp because when I'm moving around, it helps it not pop off. And if it pops off, we lose our vacuum and we lose our gas and it becomes all mixed up. So it's just easier to have one of these clamps on there. I've also found that if it pops up, sometimes the air will rush in so fast that the top up here will explode off. So you're not gonna be able to hear me over the vacuum pump. So I'm gonna go over a basic procedure. We're gonna start off with vacuuming, vacuum out all the air, cycle over to the argon, cycle back to the vacuum, cycle back to the argon, cycle back to the vacuum, cycle back to argon, and reach a point where our discharge is nice and clean on the Tesla coil, and then we'll seal it. So let's start. And then here's our low pressure tube. We have a tail on it, so let's remove that tail. And there we have our tube. Let's double check to make sure it still works. And it does. So let's set it off to the side to cool. Now, the way that I sealed that is very important. You're going to want to slowly move the tube so that it heats around it and the vacuum is going to want to start to pull it in. If you just heat one side, you'll get this weird envelope folding thing. So you make sure to spin the tube and let the glass slowly move in due to the vacuum until you reach a point where it's small enough that you can just heat it where it'll seal up and then move away from the tube so you get this nice sealed portion and then just pull off the tube and then do a final cleanup. The ampule is all nice and cool and it's sealed quite well. 
Now let's bring it up to the Tesla coil and see the glow again. Now, why does this ampule glow? And why do we bring it down to a lower pressure? We brought it down to a lower pressure because lowering the pressure decreases the ignition voltage for it, or the discharge voltage. That's the voltage which the gas needs to be excited to. Now, the Tesla coil acts as a source of electricity that then excites the gas inside. This gas gets brought to a higher energy state, and it wants to go back down to the ground state. And it does this by releasing that energy that it has gotten from the Tesla coil in the form of visible light. Now, each element has their specific spectra that they emit light in. Argon is this nice purple, but one that you're probably more familiar with is neon. Neon signs use a variety of gases, but specifically neon elemental gas is a nice orange color. Now, my question is, how well did I do on making this three inches? Looks like we're right on the nose, just off a few thou. I like to make it out of thicker glass because it can withstand drops a bit better, and it just looks nicer and has a better hand feel than the thinner glass walls. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make one of these nice test tubes. I like these as a cool demonstration, and they're great for element collections because you can store the gas and then excite it up whenever you want to see that nice spectra. Thanks for watching to the end, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions about what I made today, drop it in the comment section below, and if you liked the video, consider subscribing. If you liked the video, you might as well like it too. And look in my description because I have links to my Instagram and Discord, which my Discord is a community of like-minded individuals where we discuss a whole variety of science, and you get an early access to my different videos before I post them. Asmanyana. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.